amplifiers. There comes a point when it's not a case of, oh, let's choose a, a piece of music to play, but which amplifier shall I use? Well, the one you're looking at now is a sort of a hybrid quad 405 clone. And the original product was made by Australian Monitor. And this particular amplifier is a PA amplifier but it's got rather a nice cabinet and a rather nice heat sink and other bits and pieces that I've salvaged from it. The actual amplifier itself, the Australian monitor, was a true PA amplifier and certainly a million miles from hi-fi. So I've basically just used the cabinet. My original idea was to turn this into an integrated amplifier with a preamp and everything in, in one go. And the hard work of cutting all the holes in the front is already done. At the moment, I'm only using one, which is the, basically the main gain control. But there are enough cutouts on here for selector switches and tongue controls, if you so desire. The right of the cabinet simply got an on-off switch and the obligatory LED. Originally, this heatsink was silver in colour and was located here in the centre of the cabinet internally, which, whilst it would look better like that, the problem it has is it, as you can see by the size of it, it takes up a considerable amount of space inside and there's no basic space left for the um, electronics. It had to go on the outside. And the advantage, of course, is that it dissipates heat considerably better. I haven't actually quite finished cable tying some of this stuff as I've only just completed it. But I wanted to show you the basic ingredients that I've used on this. This is the loudspeaker protection module. And I've chosen this one for two reasons. Firstly, it's got rather, well, better than average relays for connecting to the loudspeaker and it runs independently from the mains using this switching mode um, integrated power supply so you don't need any other windings on the transformer or any other transformers to provide 12 volts so not the cheapest one but i guess it, if you didn't do this you would have to buy a transformer maybe and rectify it so overall pretty good the rectifier and smoothing pcb is one i've used probably on about three separate projects now and the main reason i like it is huge amount of capacitors and they actually hold the charge for hours so be careful even with this bleeder resistor down here they still hold the charge for a remarkably long time. And the main thing is they're 64 volt ratings. A lot of these modules that you can buy from the usual sources tend to be 50 volt capacitors, which in this case would be a disaster because we've actually got 51 volts per side. So clearly they wouldn't last terribly long. They've also got a nice block of good quality connectors on both sides. This is the input side from the transformer and this is the output side. So there's three terminals, sorry, there's two terminals for each of the negative, zero and plus. Still not quite enough, but they are nice substantial ones, not like those horrible little ones that you get on many of these boards. The rectifiers are also on heat sinks and they are shocky diodes and it's about the best compromise because shocky diodes tend to be to tend to work better at lower voltages so these are really as far as you can go sensibly because as, as i'm sure you know a claim to fame for a shocky diode is that it has a very low voltage drop. It's not quite as simple as that, as the more current you draw, 
the higher the voltage drop is, which is the inverse of what you actually want. Now this transformer came from Farnell and is a 500 watt transformer. That's way overkill for this actual amplifier. It's one that I had to hand and it's huge. You can see by the, the size of it here. I can only just reach it. The main advantage is because it's got such a good rating, the voltage drop when you start drawing current from it is absolutely minuscule. And in fact, when you're driving this amplifier at 100 watts per channel, the actual voltage drop on the DC side is only about one and a half volts, which is not far off the sort of specification you'd expect from a switch mode. The disadvantage is it is big and it's really heavy. Now, like I've done before, I've also wound on here an extra homemade 12 volt winding, which at the moment is just terminated because I've got a fuse in series here and it's just open circuit at the moment because as I've used that, I, well, normally I would have used that 12 volts to run the loudspeaker protection module. It's no longer required. So I may well take it off or leave it on there, maybe for future preamp use. Pretty well all that remains now is the actual quad 405 clones. Now I've chosen this particular one. They make this board in two varieties. Neither of them directly fit into a standard Quad 405 cabinet. So if you, if you happen to purchase these thinking you can just drop them in as a replacement, you can't. So this module actually works out a fraction cheaper than the one with the TO3 power transistors. And I tend to favor this one is because these Class A drivers here, under my finger, run really hot. When you mount them like this, of course, they share the whole heat sink. But when, if you use the one that's got the TO3s on it, there's just a little lip comes out the side here, and it has to transfer all the heat to that lip, then to the bracket, then to the heat sink. Whereas this goes straight on the heat sink and it runs those transistors much cooler. For some reason, whether it's because they're more modern transistors here, you do get a faster rise time on it, which gives a little bit more dynamics to the sound. And also the high frequency response is a little better. And that all results in the square waves looking well, more square. We're on the bench now. We're just going to do some quick power tests and some frequency response. I'll show you the power tests, the frequency responses. I'll just tell you what they are and chuck a few square waves at it to show the complete project. Now, I mentioned this particular power supply is a mammoth power supply and it's actually better than the original quad. The transformer is almost double the rating and even when you're driving it hard, it runs cold. It doesn't even get lukewarm. Same with the diodes, just gets warm to the touch. Obviously the capacitors don't get hot. I'm very delighted to tell you. The heatsink is adequate. So what else can I say? Let's see what sort of power. Now we're actually running on a, with this transformer offload we're getting about 51.5 volts, which is a couple of percent higher than the original quad, but it's quite happy to do that. So let's wind it up and look at clip and keep it just prior to clip. Well, there's clipping. And if we look at the meter, we're on this scale here times 10. So, well, it's in excess of 30 volts RMS into 8 ohms. Typical of the quad, not the fastest of square waves. Pretty respectable, no overshoot and no ringing. We'll have a quick look at 10K. Here we are with 10K and again, 
typical of the quad. No overshoot. By, by, by modern standards, a bit slow. I'm just going to show you this just out of curiosity, really. It doesn't really have any specific meaning. The LEDs on here are monitoring the rails at plus or minus just over 50 volts. Now I'm going to turn off the power and all that leaves is the power amplifiers running at quiescent conditions. can't remember what the current is to be honest. So I'll turn the power off now and as you can see the power the voltage is gradually dropping and that's both amplified still connected but there won't be any sound now you'll notice this one is going a little faster than this one and that's purely because the current drain on the 405 is slightly more from the i can't remember if it's the negative or the positive rail well that's the end of this little series on the quad 405 i've built several modules of them and tested them and i think you know my thoughts on it by now this one has been put together primarily with the purpose of selling some of the components so i can uh, retrieve some money to buy some more parts to show you it's up to you whether you think it's the amplifier for you Thank you for watching. Appreciate it as always.